What makes a good abstract? Thinking about all the sections of a manuscript, I would say that the abstract is the part of the paper that requires you to pay the most attention when you put it together. If you think about it, the abstract is the one thing that people can readily access from your paper. Whenever your peers do a PubMed search or whenever they get an alert about new publications in their field, the abstract is the one element of the paper that they will have immediate access to. And it is indeed the case that the abstract often makes or breaks the paper. A poorly written abstract may turn readers off, causing them to drop off and stop reading your article. By contrast, a good abstract can entice readers, making them hungry to learn more about your findings. It is therefore very important to spend a lot of time thinking about how to write an effective abstract. In some ways, the abstract shares several of the features that I mentioned when we talked about the discussion section. For example, it is important to do justice to your work without overhyping it. You certainly want to indicate very clearly why this is an important contribution, but you should not overhype your work because this may put off not only a potential reader, but also the editor of the journal and the reviewers. Similar to the discussion section, you should also avoid cliches and grandiose claims. And another important similarity is that you should spell out the bottom line of your study. What is the take home message? So with all of this in mind, what is a useful strategy to write an abstract? In my experience, it's very useful to write the abstract around the following six questions. First, what scientific problem are you trying to solve? Second, why is this an important problem? Why should we care about it? Then, what did you do to address this problem and how did you do it? In other words, what was your experimental strategy to address this problem? Fourth, what did you get? What were the key findings that you got in this project? Then, what does this mean? How do you interpret the results? What is your main conclusion? Last, why does this conclusion matter? How do these findings affect our thinking in the field? Is it really an important advance? How so? Again, what is the bottom line? We have encountered most of these questions in other parts of the course, but the abstract is a wonderful opportunity to bring them all together and consider their importance. Whenever you sit down to write an abstract, and not only for publication, but also for presentation at a meeting or to summarize your findings for the benefit of any audience, I would strongly encourage you to always take these questions into account. They are very useful to help you organize your thinking and write a compelling abstract. More importantly, by critically appraising your work when you go through these questions in a disciplined manner, you will be a strong advocate of your paper when you submit it to a high-profile journal. By contrast, if you go through these questions and cannot answer them in a clear way, summarizing the importance of the work in a few sentences, this can also be very informative in terms of deciding if a high-profile journal is the natural home for your study, or if you should target a specialized journal. In summary, going systematically through these questions is a very helpful strategy to summarize your work in an effective way. And at the same time, these questions will help you place your work in a broad perspective, which is always very useful before you decide where to submit your manuscript. Now tell us, how do you write your abstracts? Do you have any specific approach that you would like to share with us? Do you build your abstract around the questions that I listed in this lesson? Please comment below and join the discussion. Mm -hmm.